Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, recently I ran into this beautiful woman, and she asked me for my phone number. <laughs> then she asked me for my insurance information. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Axis and Allies. World War I, 1914, from Renegade Game Studios. <laughs> We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In Axis and Allies World War I, 1914, from Renegade Game Studios, two to eight players take on the roles of the various belligerents in World War I as they attempt to grind their way through the trenches and impose their order on Europe. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the weeds and the rules here, just of course give you the basic overview. Of course, on your turn, you go ahead, you purchase units. You have so much uh, economic resources from your various territories that you control, and you buy units. You can buy infantry, you can buy battleships, you can buy uh, transports, destroyers, submarines, you can buy airplanes, um, you can buy artillery. And then after a few rounds, uh, I believe on round four, you can start buying tanks. So there's different units that you buy. You stack them up kind of in the mobilization area. You then commit your forces to various attacks around the, um, around the board. And then you proceed to uh, roll off uh, through with, uh, with die combat in each of these battles. Then at the end of your round, you go ahead, you can deploy the, the units that you purchased at the beginning of the turn in your capital city. Uh, in the case of Britain, you can also deploy them in India. And then, of course, you uh, gain your, uh, you count up all the territories that you took during that uh, round, and you add them to your national income. Now, the game is fundamentally different in ways from, from the World War II versions of Axis and Allies. And that is here, you don't keep, in combat, you don't keep going back and forth until one side or the other is eliminated. Here, essentially, you only have one round of combat each. But what you do is you go ahead and you move uh, your units into the combat zone. And then rather than putting your units on the, on the battle board, you can actually go ahead and put dice. This game comes with a ton of uh, mini dice that you go ahead and you put on the battle board. So essentially you're going to put you know, one dice for every artillery you have, one dice for every infantry you have. But what's going to happen here is um, for every artillery you have on the board, uh, you can promote one of your infantry. So they've got supporting artillery, or later if you have tanks, instead of an infantry, you can uh, support a tank, and that makes them more powerful when you're rolling and in the turns that you're rolling. Now here, too, you also have air power. And air power functions, again, a bit differently than it does in, in the traditional Axis and Allies games. Essentially, you put your aircraft on the board, and then you have kind of a roll-off to see which, which aircraft will remain. Now, which, if, if one side ends the game with their aircraft uh, intact, they have air superiority, and essentially all their, all their artillery gets upgraded because they've got kind of spotters that can tell them where to fire. So um, that's basically how combat goes. You roll one uh, kind of one round. The defender, they go ahead, they roll one round. You remove the casualties from the game board, and that's essentially it. And you can have different units locked in battle on, in the same space for multiple turns. You can have these kind of contested areas in which no one's going to gain the industrial production from those areas. Now, the game can play up to eight players. 
Um, you've got, of course, the United States, you've got Britain, you've got Russia, you've got France, uh, you've got Italy, and then, of course, you've got uh, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Turkey, the Ottoman Empire. And these are the different factions there. And they're relatively well balanced here in this game. Now, in order for the Allies to win, they have to conquer two Central Powers capitals, and one of them must be Berlin. In order for the Central Powers to win, they must conquer two Allied Powers, and one of them must be either uh, Paris or London. But whoever can go ahead and reach their objectives wins! Axis and Allies, 1914, World War I. So that's just, of course, you know, a bare overview. There's, there's, there's more rules there, a lot more... Uh, rules and nuance here that I'm providing in this review, just giving you a basic overview of how the game is played. And this game originally came out about 10 years ago from Avalon Hill. And it, um, I played it, I think I think they sent me a copy and I reviewed it uh, when I was writing for the newspaper and I and I reviewed it there if I, if I remember correctly. Um, the game, however, that they provided, one of the big things it was notorious for was it did not have enough, there were not enough chips, and I think there were not enough infantry pieces for, uh, I think, Britain and, and Germany. And what's nice here is uh, when Renegade recently, of course, acquired uh, a lot of the catalog here for the Axis and Allies, they made sure that there's plenty of chips and there's plenty of infantry. I never ran out in the game I recently played um, uh, with this. Now, I, I played this game back in the day a lot, and I've just played this new edition just the one time. Um, but I didn't have any problems running out of chips. I think, in fact, I actually put chips from another version into this to, to, to use when I had it before um, so that I'd have enough. But I didn't have any problems with, with the current version. Uh, there was a, enough stuff here. In fact, I remember I, I saw a thing recently that said this is not, this is not a, a new edition of the game. It's just really a reprint of the game, but they do provide some of those things. So there's no new bells or whistles here. This is essentially the game. And it's, this has been a game that's been hard to find for a long, long time. So it's really cool that it's, that it's back in print. Now, i got to tell you, I, I haven't played Axis and Allies in a while. I've been playing Larry Harris, who designed the Axis and Allies titles. He, he came out with a game called War Room, which to me is like Axis and Allies on steroids. So I've been playing that a lot more. But um, I actually, the good people at Renegade sent me this. And i got to tell you something. I forgot how much fun just the simple, smooth Axis and Allies system is. Um, and this World War I version is one of my favorite versions of Axis and Allies. It's one of my favorite versions of Axis and Allies because um, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a slower pace because it feels like it does move pretty quick when, when you get into it and you're boom, 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 boom. But it feels very, it feels a little bit more deliberate again because these, these, it, it kind of simulates the grinding nature of trench warfare. And that is really cool. It is really fun. And I have really enjoyed that quite a bit, um, both when I played it, you know, years ago and now that I've been playing it again with this, uh, that I played it again with this, this version. So one thing I really like about this version is that kind of the way you're trying to get your dice uh, to, to promote. You're trying to get your artillery to promote and you're trying to get your, your aircraft to promote. And it's a real fun uh way to try to maximize okay what units am i going to commit to this battle if i commit this much artillery i'll get this much more infantry and it makes your infantry a lot more powerful to be promoted and then just like i said the fighters make your artillery a lot more powerful and i it's a it's an aspect of the game i really really like and uh, uh i think it's it's just in this one i don't think it's in any of the other versions of axis and allies and it works so well here now one thing i was not terribly keen on here is the industrial uh production board track uh, it's got a place for tens and ones, and it's. I just. I wish you had a separate board for this. I wish you had a separate chart for it, just to make things a little bit easier. In fact, I might even consider in the future just kind of printing off my own chart because the one here, it just. It's too easy for stuff to get, uh, uh, you know, kind of mixed up and pushed around. I got to get this to the table again. It's just. It's just fun, and it takes me back because you know when I was. Uh, I started playing the original Axis and Allies when I was twelve years old. Played a lot through my teenage years, through my twenties. And it takes me back. And it's so much fun. It's such a fun system. It's such a, an easy and intuitive system. And I love it. And I love this version. And if you have not ha had a chance to play the World War I version, but you're a fan of the World War II versions, uh, you got a real treat coming for you. You really do. I love this version. Uh, recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Access and Allies World War I 1914 is buy it.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again uh, for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel. That is Cody Carlson, PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Um, and uh, I actually have posted my uh, World War II and Nazi Germany lectures on that channel. So please go ahead, subscribe to that channel. It would mean a lot to me. And subscribe to this channel while you're at it. I'd also ask you to please leave a thumb on Board Game Geek to this video as well. And uh, if you do like the channel, you like the content we provide here, I'd ask you to go ahead and please click on the Super Thanks button here and uh, leave a tip. Uh, thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I guess uh, I'm done. I guess I'm off. I'm going to go play a few rounds of silent tennis. It's just like regular tennis, but without the racket. Join the Superhero Registration Act. Never! Don't do drugs.